How is the new front season? It used to be just one new front. Now it's like the new front season. How's the new front season going for you? It's going really well. So the nomenclature is the new fronts go from April 19th to May 2nd, and the new front is Digitas event on April 26th. I just I just like calling it the new front season. <laughs> it's kind of like the, you know, it's like the new season for clothes or fashion. It's been a wonderful opportunity for each of these companies to show off their content. And one of the things that's striking to me is no one is messing around. This is not small money anymore. It's a real commitment with both feet jumping in the pool. People are coming around to this idea, something obviously you guys have known for a while. There is a business to be had here. There is a business model. It's viable and it can get big. You just have to take your time, do it right, and make a true investment in it. It's a new medium. I mean, this is not television. This is not broadcast. This is not cable. Doing it right and doing it well means accepting that, not just trying to you know, recreate the old medium in the new. What do we need to do to get advertisers comfortable with, let's call it web TV for, for argument's sake. They already, know, they already know premium, now they need to know this other content. It's not UGC, it's a web original type of content. What do you think really needs to happen to get advertisers comfortable with that content? Not buy it at a really low CPM, but buy it at the premium CPM. The first is that they do absolutely need to get excited and comfortable with the content. That's, that's number one, but number two, and I mean right behind it, is that there's going to have to be scale. Or number three is that you're going to have to aggregate that buy together to create audience at scale. So it might not be one show, it might be two, three, four, five shows aggregated together to bring that scale. This to me is phase one, where clients get interested in it, realize mm -hmm. that it has real power, has a real audience, has very safe content. I sure. think phase two starts to get into what is the common currency Mm -hmm. around online video. As in measurement? As in measurement. Right. Does that look like a GRP? Does it smell like a GRP? Does it feel like a GRP? Or does it look like something entirely different? I don't think it can look like something entirely different. I think it has to feel something like a GRP. Mm -hmm. What was the epiphany that said, okay, this is how we have to do it and this is when we have to do it? So we've been doing this for four years. Mm -hmm. This is our fifth year. Yep. And the epiphany happened right before CES mm -hmm. when we started having very limited conversations and with YouTube and AOL and others about what they were doing with content on the web, what they were investing in. The biggest piece of news, I think, was the $100 million that YouTube said they were going to invest at the kind of middle to end of last year. That would get people's that attention. That really set it off. Chris, my question is, how is digital making your job harder? How is it making it easier? Um, I don't think it makes it any harder. I think it makes it a lot easier. I mean, the fact that you can get on Twitter, in my case, with 2.2 .2 million followers and tell them every night to watch my show, and give them reasons why and to tease and tantalize the public is obviously fantastic. The only negative that other famous people say is all the abuse you get, but I like that. I'm sort of British about that, you know, stiff upper lip, take it like a man. How do you hope your interaction with your audience changes over the next year? I hope to get as many followers as the Dalai Lama who I interviewed last night. He's got four million followers and has never actually tweeted a single tweet himself and doesn't follow anybody. Really quite disheartening. Uh, do you think quality really counts when it comes to the audience? I think quality really counts. I think personality really counts. I think um, you know a lot of the pe a lot of the viewers that watch the Daily Shot love the relationship John and I have. You know they could go anywhere to get stories. And I also think that um, we try to skew our stories to either stories that are like hilariously ridiculous or things that people would. Um, connect to, like moms, like we did the story today about, you know, vaccines, a debate of whether or not to get your kids vaccines. What opportunities does digital present that TV doesn't? It's fast. I like it's fast. I like that we can do the whole show, edit it, and it's out in four hours. It feels like it's a whole new world. I mean, it's like going undersea for the first time. You know, it's just like there's a whole world out here. Anything is possible. Whereas in television, you kind of knew where you go. You know that if you have a successful show, you go to syndication and you'll be on TBS or whatever. In the digital world, anything can happen. First of all, I love the purse. Can you show this to our audience? It's very bright. Felicia, why does your audience love you? I hope they love me because I share things that are interesting to them. Why does digital give you a great platform to engage with your audience? I mean, everybody's one click away. So, I mean, they're there. Their opinion is there, and I'm involved in that as much as I can be as one person. That's the world we live in, that people want to react instantly to something. So what's going on with My Damn Channel? And congratulations on the launch. Thank you. Um, well, next week we have Wyatt Snack on the show. There's so many interesting guests we want to have. I mean, all these comedians I want to have on, but I really want to get Shaq on really badly. I'm well, like, Shaq, I'm sure you're watching this iMedia interview. So Hi. very last question, what is the hardest thing you've encountered so far that you were surprised by? That I'm not the most, I get tongue-tied, blah, 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 and, uh, and being live means you can never delete that. 
Sitting with George Ruiz, he actually represents Felicia Day, who's just a few feet away. Jenna Marbles, who's one of my big favorites. You said Julia Stiles. What happens once you find great talent? What's the next step? Well, the next step is to, uh, often I'm uh, their first professional representative if they're coming from an online world. It's to really sort of take a look at the business opportunities they have in front of them, vet them, and then make the best deal you can. What are the key opportunities you want for your clients right now? Uh, well, a lot of brands are now stepping into the space because they realize that a lot of the clients they work with have very engaged audiences. So it's recognizing those opportunities and presenting value for the brands, but at the same time, allowing the content creators to really have the kind of freedom to get their content made without too much, too much control and oversight, because that's what keeps it authentic. It isn't about changing the content for the brand, it's about associating the brand with great content. Jeff, you've been to a lot of the new fronts this week. What are the highlights? There's a focus on original content like I've never seen. The other interesting thing has been the focus on moms. A lot of the original content is mom-focused, other content from the publishers. It's been a, a big theme of the week. Let's first talk trends in the mom space. What are the key trends you're seeing? How have things changed over the last 12 to 24 months? This may sound self-interested, but I think mom blogging has been blowing up. Two or three years ago, we wanted to de-emphasize the bloggers, and now the, the opposite is true. Like all, all the big advertisers want to be endorsed by the big mom bloggers. I think in a original video development, I'm seeing the digital space be more of a real and relevant farm league for bigger platforms. And people are starting to look at personalities and content and franchises that have been successful in this space. And people have a strong fan base in the digital platform. And then building from bottom up. Instead of taking big stars who have made it in television or movie and then creating a digital experience with them, it's flipping. How are you doing it? How are you finding the new bloggers? How are you finding the new talent? How are you cultivating it? One of the advantages of this medium is that you can try a lot of things. We're doing things without big budgets, which means we can try a lot and put it up there and see what people think. You have immediate focus groups and you can change gears really quickly. You can scrap what sounded like a good idea but wasn't resonating and you can pump up the things that you had no idea would connect and it connects. What are some of the shows that we should be watching for that are coming out of Disney right now? We've got Christina Grimmie Power Up, which is a retro gaming show, which is up running now, which is fantastic. We've got Swampy, which anybody who's seen Where's My Water, the app, we were building him into a character base, which would be very, very fun. And then the third one on that side is Talking Friends, which is with Outf uh, Outfit7, a partnership with them, which is bringing those uh, lovable characters to life. Last question, kind of a sales pitch. When the advertisers are looking at their dollars and they're looking at all the choices they could make, why is Disney the place that they should go? Again, back to that quality, safe environment. We know how to do it. We have the legacy of storytelling, and, and we do it better than anybody. So quality rings out in my mind. So this is actually a TriCaster, and it is the world's smallest satellite but not satellite video production vehicle so it's a it's a smart car and they're basically doing uh, six different HD feeds coming in producing it all up right here you can go to television to the web and to digital signage so it actually is, is revolutionizing television we our clients are actually producing over 60,000 hours of content a week this is the TriCaster so if you can hold this microphone I'm gonna drive out of here and take this home with me all right.